With your orientation as a sociologist, tracing your antecedents, having participated in the politics of the Second Republic, you are not ignorant of politics as is being played in this Fourth Republic. You start posing party ideologies of the Second Republic with what we have now. What are your observations? And if possible, what are the noticeable distinctions? It's a world of difference. Uh, in the Second Republic, almost all the political parties in the Second Republic had their roots in the First Republic. But after the military takeover in 1966, politics was banned for the greater part of the period until the ban on politics was lifted uh, on 21st September 1978. And parties, political associations, were 50 of them. They were, five were, was registered. The first one that was registered was, in fact, a day after the ban on politics was lifted on 21st September, the Unity Party of Nigeria, under the leadership of Obafemi Awolowo, announced his presence on the scene. So we had the Unity Party of Nigeria, we had the National Party of Nigeria, we had the Nigerian People's Party, which split, and the second half was the GNPP, Great Ni Greater Nigerian People's Party, and the PRP, People's Redemption Party. Each of these parties had, their, had its, its roots in the First Republic. And if I may take them one by one, the Unity Party of Nigeria was expressly democratic, socialist democratic, practiced democratic socialism by its, according to its manifesto. It means that it was on the center left of the political spectrum. The NPN, which was a reincarnation of the Northern People's, Party, uh, uh, Northern People's Congress, started as the Jamia Mutenen Arewa, which was a Fulani cultural organization formed by Sir Armando Bello de Sadwana of Sokoto, Sabubaka Tafua Balewa, Malamami Nukano and others in the 1940s to protect the privileges of the traditional institutions in the northern region at that time. So these are the, the, the uh, antecedents, the historical antecedents. Then the next one was the People's Redemption Party, which had its roots in the NEPU, Northern Elements Progressive Union, formed by Malamamino Khan. The Northern Elements Progressive Union was formed as a response to the inherent conservatism of the Northern traditional institutions, which was based on elitism. It was a feudal, explosive feudal, feudal system that promoted the interests of the emirs and the elite and dispossessed the, minor, the, 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 the masses. And as a result, Malam Amino Kano formed the Northern Elements Progressive Union, which became PRP in 1979, purposely to protect the interests of the masses. And then we have the not, and, um, NPP, led by Azikiwe, which was liberal, center-right, not extreme-right, not center-right of the political spectrum. And then the GNPP of the same persuasion. And those were the five political parties that we had at, at that time. Now, each of these parties started with an analysis of the society as they understood it and the type of society they want to build. So, for example, the NEPO existed, the Russian raison d'etat was to uh, save or the, 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 the masses from the oppression of the ruling class in the north. Now, the Unity Party of Nigeria, its raison d'etat was that Nigeria was divided, was increasingly become class, becoming class-oriented and it was aiming to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. And its philosophy was egalitarianism. The NPP was liberal, which means that um, it was not socialist. It was not feudal. It was not conservative. 
but it believed in uh, allowing people it's kind of laissez fair it's a kind of laissez fair type of philosophy and um, the GNPP which was based in the Kanuri part of northern Nigeria the present Borno state led by Haji Waziri Ibrahim was also let's say liberal in political ideology that is the foundation of these political parties and if I may go further The, the Unity Party of Nigeria analyzed Nigerian society and said, what does the society need to bridge that gap? And this was expressed in the form, in, in 19, uh, pre-independence and 1959, it was expressed in the form of four freedoms. One, pre-independence, freedom from British rule, freedom from ignorance, freedom from disease, and freedom from want. Now how do we achieve these freedoms? It was the view of the Unity Party, uh, which took over from the AG in those days, that the only way that a, an underdeveloped black ex-colonial society can develop is to empower the people with education. That is, that was why we had the four cardinal programs of free education, health services, full employment, urban and integrated rural development. These programs derive from an analysis of what uh, the party needs to do to achieve the objectives of the kind of society that it wants. Now let me tell you the fundamental difference between what existed at that time and what is existing now. The fundamental difference from what I have seen about the present political parties, with the exception of one, is that what we are seeing now, the El Progressive Congress gives us a list of programs that it wants to implement. Ditto the PDP, ditto the N uh, NNPP. That, does not, that is not the distinguishing factor of political parties because any political system can build roads, can build infrastructure. Iran is a, I mean, a, a Muslim state, but it's building roads, it's building infrastructure. United Arab Emirates is an Islamic monarchy. It's not even a democracy. And it's building one of the best infrastructures in the world as of today. So if it is about infrastructure, and like I told some people, we didn't even need to ask the, the British colonialists to leave because they too were building infrastructure. The critical issue is what is the type of society that you want to build? Is it a, an exploitative society? Is it a society that is more uh, uh, accommodative and more, and more embracing of the lower classes? So the fundamental difference is some political parties, they say they want to build infra infrastructure, but they don't tell us how it will affect the masses, how they will bridge the gap, the widening gap between the rich and the poor. Merely saying you are going to give employment is not enough. Because if you look at the present structure, for instance, the salaries and earnings of legislators, as recently revealed to us by Senator uh, Sani, Sani Obama, I mean, Salis Obasani from of Kaduna Central. A, an appro, uh, uh, what is it called? An, uh, uh, I mean, an ap, uh, average civil servant for the next 30 years is not going to receive the salary, however hard working and prominent his position, of a senator in one year. What kind of society is that? You contested the election for a seat in Bende State House of Assembly and you were a member of the State Executive Council. How were the party policies able to make a landfall and how effective were the execution of those party policies? The ideology dictates the policy. The ideology dictates the actual policies and programs of government. So if you have an ideology that 
seeks to transfer power and privilege, economic and political power, to the masses. It will have different program than a party that exists to protect the interests of the existing elite. That was precisely the difference between the Unity Party of Nigeria at that time and the uh, 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 National Party of Nigeria, which, as I told you, is a reincarnation of the L N uh, NPC and a reincarnation of the Jamia Mutenen Arewa. And this is precisely what we're having today. Nigeria has not moved. We are having structures or what they exist, political formations that exist to protect existing privileges. And political formations that are not even many that exist to transfer economic and political power to the, under, to the underprivileged masses. And that is the fundamental difference I see. Not question of uh, how many projects, are they, what type of roads are they going to build. No. That is the fundamental difference I see between the PDP and APC on the one hand and the Labour Party on the other. So coming back to how it translated to the programs at that time, when the Unity Party won election, it did not win the federal government. It only won in what we call the Lubo State, the UPN states, Lagos, Oyo, Ogun, Bendel, uh, Ondo at that time, we call them the Lubo states. Immediately, within a week, free education was declared. Free education, free health service, which means government took responsibility for empower them. That is, em that is the real empowerment. Our concept of development and empowerment was not like sharing money. As the scriptures would say, you don't give people fish, you teach them how to fish, or you make them capable of fishing. Our concept of development because people think that development means building roads, building bits. That's material concept of development. Development is a, is a planned process of change that includes material, institutional, and social changes that lead to life sustenance, that lead to uh, improved life chances, that leads to freedoms. Freedom from ignorance, freedom from disease. This is the concept of development, not merely building, 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 which is what these, these uh, uh, parties are concentrating. So because of our ideology, our administration concentrated on improving the human capacity, the human capacity to improve the environment. Our concept was that you have to improve the human beings, first and foremost, to improve the environment. You build the individuals, they call it now, so as uh, you know capacity building and so on you improve the society an illiterate a predominantly illiterate society is incapable of being a productive society such a society is condemned to borrowing and that is where we find ourselves and that leads us to the kind of administration that we have the npn policy and administration was on important 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 <coughs> That led to the Stokumbo syndrome, importing what is made in foreign countries, whereby our youths, the labor of our youths, is transferred to build industries abroad, rather than in building capacity of our youths to for self-sufficiency. That is a fundamental difference in the policy implications of the ideologies of the two types of uh, political parties that we have. I, I put them into, into, into uh, you know, boxes, that is, those that are conservative, that want to uh, preserve or protect the status quo, and those that really want change. So those are the two political formations, even though they may call themselves different names. That's the policy impl implication. The policy implication, to repeat, is that Whereas the conservatives wanted to preserve the existing privileges. They were not producing, they are not imp uh, improving the, 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 the youth importing importation syndrome, Tokumbo syndrome, which has led us to where we are today. Unlike the UPN, which was in charge of Lagos and a few other states, including Bernal at that time, that imp improved the human capacity. And this has even, up to today, we are enjoying the, the benefits of what our world did in those days. Imagine if we didn't have an Awolowo. Imagine if we have 
illiterate. 90%, 70% as we are having in other parts of the country. What Nigeria would have been? It would have been infinitely worse than what we are having today. It is those said that politics is local. With your party, Unity Party, holding sway in Bender State, MPN was still the governing party at the federal. How were you able to function effectively and implement party policies regardless? Our duty, my own particular um, responsibility, I was involved in the actual implementation at the policy level the party had experts that produce what we call policy papers on all aspects of these four programs that I've told you. Policy papers. And then we work out structures on how they were to be implemented. And it was our duty to administer, it was part of my responsibility to administer the unified teaching service of the then Bendel State. The unified teaching service included primary education, secondary education, and then the new teachers training colleges. I mean, the new uh, 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 colleges of education that we established at that time. That was our brief. And it involved one. Before we started implementing the program, the experts that studied made, presented the cost, the cost or implications. And it was found that even in states where school fees were paid, the total amount of school fees collected was less than 2% of the overheads and capital cost of education in those states. And even of those 2% that, that was collected, most of them were, went to private pockets. In other words, there was no economic justification or discouragement in implementing free education. So, and one of the things that we did was this. For instance, let me take example of Lagos State, even though I was in Bendel State, because that was an extreme example of educational deprivation in a very highly populated city. Children were going to school morning and evening, two shifts. Some children would go by 8 or 12, they close, others would enter by 2 to 4. Children would leave home very early, others would leave. It was a problem, and it was so throughout the country, particularly in the South. In our own, a lot of young people did not have access to the education. So the challenge we faced was that we had hundreds, thousands of young people, including those who are even above a school age of six years, who wanted to come to school. And we had to accommodate all of them. And the government had a central agency for production of all the, tech, all the education, all the textbooks and exercise books. Children were not required to pay school fees. They were not required to buy textbooks. And we had massive recruitment. I personally toured all parts of the country, recruiting teachers for the Bendel State Unified Teaching Service. It was when I went to Sokoto on recruitment of teachers, and we, had no, we did not discriminate. We don't discriminate. We don't say this is Bender, don't come. This is East, don't come. The only thing that I personally did not like was a situation where some people will come and say, I'm from Asaba, and they are not from Asaba. They were telling lies. We do not like that. When I went to Sokoto on recruitment, I found that the total number of secondary schools in, in Tokoto State was not up to the number of schools we had in Oredo, Oluqua government area at that time. It was a big challenge. Administratively speaking, we had hundreds of thousands of people and we recruited teachers. That was the education. Let me tell you another challenge that we faced. The program was very successful because the federal uh, uh, unity, unified, I mean, universal primary education established by General Obasanjo in 1976, UPE National, which is different from the UPE established by Awolowo in 1955. The national UPE. Under the national UPE, the federal government was responsible for paying primary school teachers and teacher training colleges. Now, our program was highly successful. We had no problem. But when the National Party of Nigeria discovered that UPN, the UPN states were carrying out their programs very successfully and there was no problem, they said, how are they doing it? 
Because at the time that we said that education was going to be free, they said it was impossible. That nobody can do it. They now went to find out and found that a lot of the expenses was being borne under federal UPE. You know what they did? They abrogated the universal primary education program and transferred the responsibility to states. Our government, no, the, our administration, that aspect of administration nearly collapsed because we found it difficult to continue paying. And more, more and more money was now diverted to paying of salaries instead of other infrastructure because there is opportunity cost. Before the government was established, the government had worked out, the party had worked out what it would cost to do this, what it would cost to do this, what it would cost to do this. So it was now becoming a kind of lopsided concentration on education. That was the main challenge that we faced. But we, we managed to pull through. We never went back. From the analysis this far, it seemed accountability and intelligence in policy making influenced choices of program at that time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Intelligence, look, you know what we call our leader, the man with a plan. You cannot undertake a policy of transformation of a major social group or a major nation such as Nigeria without meticulous planning and strict implementation. Let me tell you, during our time, you cannot use government money to drink tea in the office. You cannot use government money under a wall of war to drink tea in the office. If you want to drink tea, do the tea from your house and bring it. There was strict accountability. And that was how. That was how we were able to implement these programs. Meticulous planning. We believed that we believe, we borrow this idea that if you take a seed, say a palm tree, a palm, a palm seed, all aspects of what that palm seed is likely to be is locked up. What the general palm tree is like, is locked up in the seed. In other words, if you want to build, make a plan, nature's organizational organization is the most perfect. So we imitate nature, like the palm seed, the plan is locked up in the seed and the success or failure depends to a large extent on the plan. You must take into account all foreseeable variables and implement it with strict, st very strictly. So that was what we did at that time. But like I told you, the problems we had was that the federal government was determined to undermine us. And I've just given you one example of the abrogation of the UPE by transferring the responsibility of payment of primary school teachers to states, which was not the case before we came to power. Nonetheless, uh, corruption was still attributed to the governments in the Second Republic, which formed the argument for toppling the governments at that time just like we have corruption in government today. What is the true color of corruption at that time in comparison with what we have today? Thank you, very important, very good question. Professor Ambrose Ali, our governor, was a university teacher, professor of morbid anatomy. How much were university teachers got? He was using an old Mercedes Benz that could not travel from Benin to Afuse or to anywhere. He campaigned with a borrowed car. And throughout the period he was governor, the house that is built is less than that bungalow you saw outside. Go to Ekboma. The house that he built is less than that uh, bungalow you are seeing outside. I'm talking of the governor. The modern people think that we were stupid. That how can you see money and you did not steal it? They are still laughing at all that we were, we were stupid. Joe Conde lived in his own house and was using an old car. And he built hundreds of schools. He built hundreds of infrastructure. I'm just giving you an example. I'm just giving you an example. These things that they are doing today, we did not know it. That is not to say that there were no, traces. you know, you know, traces of, of traces of corruption here and there. But in general, under Awolowo's administration, I mean Awolowo's leadership as a party, and in Bendel State, 
people were doing all kinds of things, but generally, like Peter Obi said the other day, if the head is not a thief, it's difficult for the followers to be stealing or with, uh, with impunity. So, giving you the example of Delta State, you can go like he used to see, go and verify, go and find out where is Ambrose Ali's house in Ekboma. We used to go to his house on weekends. We will stay outside because the house is too small. You cannot accommodate. We will stay at the corridor. There was no this kind of thing that uh, once you become a governor, begin to build mansions, begin to carry SUVs. It did not exist during our time. Most of the experiences appear to be hanging in the air. Let me bring it close. As a commissioner, what were your clues shared with sharp practices? And if they were, how did you deal with those? Yes, let me tell you. Let me tell you. One of the experiences that I had, in fact, I was young and uh, 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 coming from the university, reading was not a problem for me. One, so one officer will bring one file and say, sign here, sign here. I say, what do you mean sign here? I will collect the file. I will read it from the beginning to the end. I will discover that the submission that he made, either for promotion or for claims, is not justified by the, what is contained in the file. When I found the sign here, sign here, I now said, don't bring individual files to me. Everything that concerns a particular issue, collect all of them and bring. Either for promotion or for this and that. Right? And we were very strict. We were very, very strict. Now, we did not know what it meant. There are some people, there were some people, ask my friend, they don't mean, I don't know. Some of them that were in the, in the legislature, they did not have opportunity to, you know, give appointments and that. They will come and then they will uh, ask for appointment of watch night, um, gardener, um, gardener, um, what is it called? Cleaners. Cleaners, and so on and so forth. Non teaching staff. Then they will, I will sign for them. So after some time, one of them came, came and said, eh, well, I just want to thank you very much. You know, uh, this, is, uh, 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 this is what I collected from them. I said, collected from who? You mean you? Collecting money from cleaner? Collecting money from uh, 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 watch night? Collecting money from it, that is, I said, I cannot do it. We had a lot of privileges by virtue of being holding political office. You're having a free house, you're having a free car, you're having a free driver, you're having this, and you are collecting money from this thing. I said, I cannot do it. Our friendship spoiled. Our friendship spoiled. That was the end of our friendship. Are you, are you hearing me? When my, my, my late friend, because when I, want, when I want to give appointments, the, person, the people I send it to, they will go and collect money from behind and say they want to come and to come to me. So one chief who knew about me came and said, uh, uh, the things we sent, I hope he has, we hope it has reached your hand because of our appointment. I said, what thing did you send? I don't know what you're talking about. He said, ah, so, 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 chief, did you not come and see me? So that weekend, I went to the chief. I said, sir, I greeted him in tradition. I was very young at that time, 40 years ago, more. Please, all those people you collected money from, return them. Otherwise, I'm going to cancel the appointments. He said, ah, well, uh, forget it now, take it. I said, I'm not going to take it easy. I canceled the appointment because if I let it go, they would think it was because of the money. So we had a lot of experience. One of my friends that I used to, then after that, I started sending my friend to give a, a appointment letter to people. So I sent him to one, uh, Ubulokiti one day. When he reached Ubulokiti, he could not see the person that had worked for us that wanted to give appointment. 
They told him that the man, maybe as a, as a watch night or non teaching staff, that the man had gone to the farm. So he went to the man's farm to look for him because he did not want to return to Benin with the appointment letter. So when he saw the man, the man came down from the top of palm tree, said, I sent him to give him this appointment letter. You know what the man said? Or oh, Bakwaka? I mean, is it that means in our, in our language? Is this ordinary appointment that people are looking for with money? You now come to give it to me in the bush. That he cannot believe. So when my friend came back, he said, This our magnanimity is coming too much. Some of them don't believe, they think that there is something else. <laughs> so we have this experience about uh, here and there.